channel. Today I'm going to be talking about tear staining. Now this is one of the things that I get asked about most frequently and it is a subject that I have poured my self into, if you want to say, uh, for many, many years. Owning quite a few different short nose breeds, I have encountered tearing in my Cavaliers and you know with Stasi as well. So I've tried everything, I've learned a few things, and I wanted to share what I've learned in hopes that maybe it can help some of you. So first of all, with any short-nosed breed, you're going to have usually tearing. It's just the nature of the shape of the face and water cannot run uphill. So if the nose is, you know, pushed in flat, usually that plumbing kind of gets a little skewed so that um, it doesn't necessarily, the, the tears don't necessarily run down the pipes, so to, so to say. In Stasi's case, her nose is a little bit higher than her eyes, kind of, um, or at least that's what her veterinary ophthalmologist says. This is Stasi right here. And so it's, you know, it's going to be natural for her to tear some because water can't go uphill. So it's not that it's noticeably higher than her eyes or anything, it's just the shape of her face. But there are some things that we can do to alleviate the staining and there's also some things that we all need to be checking out and making sure is not going on that is causing the staining so that is my point of this video today um, first of all to explain some of the causes of tearing and also to tell you what you can do about the tearing so let's talk about the causes so the first cause like i said is just the shape of the dog's face some dogs, no matter what you do, they're going to tear. Those tears are gonna spill out onto the face because the tears are not gonna go down the plumbing or what is called the tear ducts. Um, so that could be one cause and if that is the case, there is nothing pretty much that you can do other than to pretty much control the staining that happens on the face, which I will tell you about in a little bit. Now the next um, cause that could be a reason why your uh, dog could be tearing, it could be that they have some internal eyelashes, either at the bottom or at the top. This is called dystichia. Now, I believe that any dog who is tearing should see a veterinary ophthalmologist. Don't just like blow it off and say, oh, this is normal. I think that you should just have a visit with your veterinary ophthalmologist first. Make sure that there's no underlying causes for the tearing that could be fixed because things like dystichia or ingrown eyelashes can eventually cause problems such as corneal ulcers. If those eyelashes are rubbing against the cornea, it creates like an erosion of the cornea and that's a very, very serious problem that can cause blindness. So I think you should definitely, you know, rule out anything like that and make a trip to a specialist, which is called a veterinary ophthalmologist. So dystichia can be um, fixed, and the way that they fix that is by a surgery called cryotherapy, and it's basically where they freeze the follicles of the um, eyelashes that are coming in inside of the eye causing some irritation which is could possibly be causing tearing now with that surgery you can lose pigment in the um, eyelid margin so if that's important to you you need to you know be aware of that however most of the time they say that the pigment does come back now in Stasi's case in Stasi's case she does have some dystichia which in this breed is very very common we just got back from the eye doctor yesterday, and um, even though she has the dystichia, it's not causing her any pain or any problems at this time. The reason why I know that, and the reason why he knows that, is first of all, she's not squinting. 
So if you see that your dog is squinting, then it could be that those, you know, they may have some eyelashes that are causing some irritation there. So she's not doing that. The eyelashes that she has, or the stickier that she has in her upper margins of her eyelids, are still under the skin. So he can see them there. They may, you know, poke out at some point in time, but right now they're not causing any problems. So we're gonna leave them alone until, or if it ever would cause her a problem. And then I would have the cryo surgery done because I don't want, you know, any risk of her having corneal ulcers. So we're just gonna keep an eye on that and I suggest, you know, doing an ophthalmology visit every six months, um, I think would be good. So twice a year to get those little eyeballs checked in on. So that's one, um, one cause of tearing. Another cause of tearing is something that is called epiphora. And that is excessive tear, tear production. Um, or actually, you know, like she has epiphora. No, she really doesn't have epiphora. Epiphora is excessive tear production. And what that is, is hers is not excessive. It's a normal amount of tears. Her tears are just spilling onto her face because of the conformation of her face instead of going down her ducts. Um, so they will check the tear production by putting these little strips in your dog's eye and it can tell them whether or not your dog has excessive tearing or if it's just normal tearing and also it can detect if your dog has dry eye and believe it or not dry eye is another cause of tearing you wouldn't believe it you would think okay dry eye we're not gonna you know produce tears but it's actually the opposite sometimes uh, where the eye overcompensates and produces a lot of tears to try and wet and coat the eye. So that's another cause. So we have um, dystichia, we have um, dry eye, we have excessive tearing, just an overproduction of tears. We have the confirmation of the face, which you can't really do anything about that. And then there's something called entropion. And what entropion is, it's an inner rolling of the eyelid. So this eyelid, it can happen anywhere on the eyelid, rolls in and it just rubs against the eye, which causes irritation, which causes tearing. So that could, you know, be a, an issue. And then you have allergies. And allergies, just like if you think of humans, and if you think of, um, you know, like if you have allergies yourself, and you go like hay fever season, or you know, your eyes water. Well, that could be the same for dogs. So they could have allergies, which can produce the extra tearing. So those are kind of the main problems that could cause tearing. And let's talk about what we do with that. So if it's a confirmation problem, there's not much you can do about it if there's no other issues um, other than to keep the face clean and dry as much as possible. Now, one of the things that I do wanna mention is that um, you should be giving your dogs filtered water only because that the minerals and iron and stuff that are in like tap water could cause some staining. So if you give filtered water, that can help. Also, if you have a long um, coated breed, doing a water bottle instead of water bowls can be very, very helpful to keeping that face dry. The main thing that you want to do is to keep the face dry. Now, I had someone comment the other day that said, what do I do, my dog's face stinks and I'm constantly cleaning it. Okay, so Stassi tears, she does tear, and her face does not smell at all. So my advice to this subscriber was that even though you think that you're cleaning it constantly, either you need to clean it a little better and, and, and learn the techniques um, to clean it thoroughly. Or, you know, some people say, well, I'm cleaning their face constantly, but they don't realize that 
This needs to be done every single day without fail. You cannot, you know, go more than a day to properly clean the face, if not two or three times a day. And that takes a lot of discipline to do that. I mean, it really does. I wake up, you know, 30 to 45 minutes early every morning just to clean Stassi's face and do her morning routine. So it really does take a big, big effort. And if you're cleaning it properly, you should have no smell. And if you're cleaning it often enough, you should have no smell at all. So make sure you watch the video on my daily morning routine for how to clean a Shih Tzu or any breed's face properly and to keep it dry with using the drying powder and you won't have any smell. The smell comes from yeast. So what happens is, is the eyes tear, and if it stays wet, yeast grows. Yeast smells. It smells very musky. It has like a disgusting odor to it. Um, so if you are having that yeasty problem with the smell, then you need to clean it a little bit better or maybe change up the products that you're using. Maybe they're not quite working. And look at my daily morning routine for the products that I use to clean Stasi's face. You can also buy wipes. Um, and I will leave the link to those in the description box below. I think they're called Duo Pro or something like that. It is the same thing as the Maliseb wipes but it's a little bit gentler, 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 you know, okay, you know what I mean, um, because you're going near the eyes. So I will leave that link, you can get them on Amazon, and those wipes are, they won't get rid of the stain, because it's not meant to get rid of the staining, but it will get rid of the smell. So if you're finding that you're having that yeasty smell, these wipes may help you. It has an orange cap to it, and like I said, I'll leave that link because I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the word. Um, the second thing, or third thing, I don't know, I'll lose count. Another thing that you can do is to put artificial tears in an ointment. So it's called Arti Artificial Tears Ointment. It doesn't have a brand name. It's just, it comes in a little tube. And I find that I just started doing that after an, um, I got this advice from another Shizu mom. And I just started it and I really do think that this helps. I usually do put the ointment in once or twice a day, usually in the morning and it, always at nighttime. Sometimes in the morning I do it, sometimes not, but usually always at nighttime. And what I think this does is it just coats the eye and kind of protects it against like dust and just every you know pollutant that we have um, around. And I think that is a very, very important um, thing that you can do if you're having the tearing. So try that, artificial tears ointment. Also, there is a product called Accubrite, and it's spelled O-C-C-U-B-R-I-G-H-T, I believe. I will also leave the link to that in the description box below. You can also get that on good old Amazon. And this is a chew that I give Stasi and Harper every day, and it is just to prevent the tearing or prevent the staining. Not to prevent the tearing, because they're gonna tear, but to prevent the staining. And I think it works by changing the pH of the tears or something like that. Now, I will tell you that it does contain Tylosin. And okay, stop right now if you're gonna blast me about this because I know that some people are like, ah, I would never use an antibiotic every day on my pet, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that is your opinion. I have my opinion. And I, this product came highly recommended by her veterinary ophthalmologist specialist. And the reason why I am okay with this Tylosin is because it is, yes, it is an antibiotic, but it is an antibiotic that is used never in our pets. So it is something that used to be used years and years ago but now they don't use this antibiotic anymore. So everyone's 
um, you know, concern that your pet will get immune to the antibiotic and then if they have an infection, they won't be able to fight the infection because they're gonna be immune to it. That's not true. Um, yes, it is true if you were giving another type of antibiotic that you would normally use for things that our pets would need an antibiotic for. But this is an antibiotic that is not widely used and it's not hardly ever used. Also, it's a very, very minute amount. So I know that this is a personal decision and if you don't agree with the decision um, of using it, then don't use it. But I use it and I don't use it all the time. I will do it in spurts. So I will give it for a month or two and then I will stop it for a month or so and then I'll start it back up again because I wanna give them that little bit of break in between because I find that it works better that way. I have found that it does work and if it's working for me and my you know, veterinary ophthalmologist recommends it and I did research on it myself, I'm okay with it. You may not be okay with it and that's okay too. We all do what we need to do. Okay, so that is um, covering that. The next thing is that you really need to just, like I said, keep that face very, very, very dry throughout the day and that will prevent the staining. So if the, the fur stays dry, it can't really stain or you're, it's gonna, if you have a pet that tears a lot, believe me, it's hard. I, even with all that I do, I have staining, I do. Um, but you can prevent it as much as possible or try and reduce it as much as possible by keeping the face nice and dry throughout the day using that drying powder and uh, making sure it's really, really clean. Now, you know, tearing is and tear staining is not just cosmetic. It is very much cosmetic, you know, because it's not pretty if you have a bunch of like you know, brown stains all over the, the white face. But it's also, it, it can cause a secondary bacterial infection. So I, I know for me, even though I was doing everything in my power to keep her face clean and dry and I was washing her face all the time, I, um, want, like a couple of months ago, I never realized how deep her, she has like a pocket, Stasi does has a pocket right here at the, like, right under her eye and right on the side of her nose. She has this deep, like, pocket to where her, her nose kind of goes in. It's just the confirmation of her face. And I was cleaning her face, and I was putting the drying powder on, and I was doing everything, but one day she started, like, flinching. I'm like, what's the matter? So I really, like, parted the fur, and it was red way down, way down in there. And so now, you know, I cleared that up, not a problem, I cleared it up. But if I would have let that go, that would have been an infection. So you really need to make sure that you are cleaning the face really good and drying the face really good and making sure that drying powder is in any kind of folds because that can cause an infection. I know that a lot of groomers and veterinarians suggest that you cut away the hair in that area so that you can prevent that. And personally, I am not going to do that because I'm diligent with her face cleanings and keeping it dry. But if you can't be, and I realize not everybody can do this, it's, it's hard. Uh, but I don't have any young children at home and so I can devote the time to it. So I understand if you have young children at home and you know, you're know you busy and you just cannot do it, then if you need to clip away the hair at, you know, in the corners of the eyes to keep that area clean and dry, then that's what you need to do. Like I said, everyone needs to do what they need to do for their own particular pet. So, I think that about covers everything. I wanted to give you guys this overview kind of of what causes tear stain or what causes tearing and what causes the staining, which I know I said, but if I didn't say it, I will say it again. The staining is caused from the wetness sitting on the fur. 
Um, so that concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description box below and we will catch you on the next video. And Sassy wants to say thanks for watching and we hope you have a great day. Bye guys. Say bye. Say bye. Bye bye. Bye guys.